Going to mention a few things that are uh, kind of what I call unresolved issues of data needs. One of them is this issue that's been brought up about the threshold of respiratory irritation. Uh, chlorine's been well studied in this regard. There's actually good animal data and there's some reasonable human data on chlorine. Uh, and the thresholds are documented, although they're not addressed in drinking water regulation, they're addressed elsewhere. Um, what people in the water industry don't seem to recognize is, is chloramines are really much more potent uh, respiratory irritation, irritants. Uh, and this, again, is not addressed in regulation. Uh, there is a small body of evidence, part of it which Jeff uh, uh, alluded to earlier about chronic respiratory disease and lifeguards working in indoor swimming pools uh, and in food workers that are in, in plants where they're using chloramine uh, in the, you know, to clean up their uh, lettuce or whatever it is they happen to be worried about. Uh, that, it's, not a, it, it's not something that's really been documented experimentally so you really know what the thresholds might be. Uh, as uh, I think Jeff alluded to, it's likely that this, in drinking water, this would be a problem if you're not controlling your speciation of chloramine. Uh, so if you get to the point where you're where you're actually going towards the uh, trichloroamine, which is very much more volatile, preferentially blows off. Uh, that's what's been attributed to here. Uh, the uh, uh, it, it's, it's an issue that really needs to be, really should be followed up on. Uh, I, I will note that when we did that skin hyperplasia study that people called attention to, uh, we didn't find chloramine acting as a primary irritant and causing skin hyperplasia at all in the mice. But one thing that we did find, which is not in the papers, we had especially designed the exposure method. We were originally going to have the mice swimming in the water and uh, for 10 minutes, and we had to put a, put a collar around them so their head was held way out of the water, out of the beaker, uh, because they died of respiratory irritation, uh, acute respiratory irritation, for, uh, if they were either exposed to chlorine dioxide or chlorine. Chlorine had no problem, but we, I, I don't remember the concentrations. I think it was in the order of 100 milligrams per liter. We had 100% mortality. So it's, it's not something, there are, there are issues with this. Uh, and that's actually with chlorine dioxide, it was documented in the animals that were drinking water that they had uh, 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 pathologic changes in the, in the nasal turbinates. So there are respiratory irritants and there's some possibility that, you know, off-gassing in a shower and so on and so forth might create a problem if the chloramine speciation is not controlled. And chlorine dioxide could also be a bit of a problem, but neither case have anybody really looked at a, uh, is trying to establish a threshold.